This is my home. This is my kitchen. This is my family. Tilly. Jack. Holly. Megan. And of course, my wife Tana. You may think you're the busiest person in the world, but over this series, I'm going to prove it's still possible to cook stunning food at home. My rules are simple. Home cooking has to be easy. It's got to be fast. It's got to be delicious. So if you think you can't cook amazing food at home, think again. These are the only recipes you'll ever need. Breakfast, lunch and dinner. Today, I'm putting together a fantastic breakfast, lunch and dinner with an American flavour. I've travelled throughout the United States for my work and as well as having some shockingly bad meals over there, I've also had some brilliant ones. And right now, the US food scene is really vibrant. Lots of new talented young chefs incorporating new flavours into their dishes and reinventing American classics. Taking my cue from some of the best, this is my ultimate American home cooking. First up for breakfast, my take on a US diner classic. Eggs baked with crispy hash browns and smoky sweet bacon. For lunch, the mighty American Caesar salad with griddled chicken breast and a big bowl dressing. Followed by peanut butter and jam cookies to die for. Time for a little drink. <laughs> and middle daughter Holly joins me in the kitchen. You put yours in there, I'll put mine here. Dad! We're creating an American feast with barbecue style beef brisket, crunchy light coleslaw and spicy sweet potato wedges. This is my ultimate American food. Breakfast, lunch and dinner. First up, eggs baked in hash browns. The secret of a great hash brown are the potatoes. I prefer using really nice waxy potatoes. They cook better, but more importantly, they hold themselves together. We're not going to slice the onion or the potatoes. We're actually going to grate them. The potatoes get really nice and crispy. I mean, seriously crispy. Now, the onion. That way you get that nice balance of that onion flavour running through every little shard of potato. Season with salt, pepper, olive oil and cayenne. Give that a really good mix through. And then squeeze all that water out. And look at all that juice we squeeze out of there. Really important. The more liquid you remove, the crispier your hash browns will be. Nice large pan. Put that on. Once the pan's hot, pour in a good glug of olive oil. That sound confirms how important it is to have your pan nice and hot. So it seals the grated potato and onion together. So take the spoon and just pat it down. What we're trying to do now is get it really nice and compact going round the outside of the pan with little flecks of butter. You just slip them down the back gently. And that gets the onions caramelised. Here's a great tip for turning your hash browns over quick and easy. Take a plate, place it on top and just flip it over and then slide it back in very quickly. You see the colour we've got on there now. Got that nice crispy texture of the potato. I'm going to use the hash brown as a bed for my baked eggs. Crack in your eggs nice and gently. Just a little sprinkling of the cayenne to make the eggs a little bit spicy. Then into a preheated oven for six to eight minutes. Meanwhile, onto my bacon and I'm giving it a classic American twist. Now, one thing I could never get my head around when I first started eating lots of American breakfast was the sweetness from the bacon. I've grown up to love that combination of smoky sweet flavours and it's so easy. Pan on and simply heat olive oil, brown sugar, salt and pepper and butter. Bacon in and as it cooks it becomes irresistibly caramelised and golden brown. Turn off the gas and my glazed bacon is absolutely ready. Beautiful. Now my hash browns and baked eggs are ready. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Just keep your spatula underneath there. Onto your plate. And that bacon 
sets beauty on top of the baked egg and that hash brown underneath. And you can see why the best breakfasts in the world are always in America. This is an all-American superhero of a breakfast. Eggs baked in hash browns with glazed bacon. Next, I'm showing you a fantastic American-inspired lunch and dinner. But you don't need to go to the US to buy the ingredients. Here's a closer look at the key ones. First up, it's beef brisket, a super cheap cut from the breast of the cow. It's underused in the UK, but loved by American cousins and used for incredible deli cuts like pastrami and succulent salt beef. The key to beef brisket is to cook it low and slow to make it tender. And I've got a delicious barbecue style recipe for dinner. Next, sweet potatoes, as American as apple pie. Sometimes called yams in the USA, they're native to the tropical Americans. They cook quicker than standard potatoes. They're packed with nutrients and have a fantastic sweet flavor, whether you mash them, bake them, or roast them. But I really love the simple sweet potato wedges I'm making for dinner. The ultimate American staple has to be peanut butter and more than half the peanuts grown in the US are used to make it. I love it both crunchy or smooth and not just spread on bread. It's fantastic in savory sauces like satay or even in desserts. Like the peanut butter and jam cookies I'm making for lunch. The main course will be a crispy big Caesar salad. But the first job are my peanut butter and jam cookies. Start with the cookie dough. Simply combine muscovado sugar, peanut butter, and butter into light and fluffy. Then add your egg, a splash of milk, vanilla seeds, and beat again until smooth. Sift together salt, baking powder, and flour. Then mix until thoroughly combined. In floured hands, roll the cookie dough into golf ball sizes. Flatten and create an indent with your finger. Fill with half jam and half peanut butter. Place the cookies on a tray lined with baking paper and bake in a preheated oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Cool before serving. Next job, main course, and my take on an iconic American salad, first made almost a century ago. Caesar salad is definitely a classic. But the trick to keeping dishes like this modern and relevant is to tweak them, but not lose what made them brilliant in the first place. Here's my version for the ultimate American lunch. My first twist is in the dressing. For me, the most important part of the Caesar salad is that dressing. Rich, creamy, slightly spicy. Begin by making a basic mayonnaise. Start off with the egg yolks in just a little spoon, Dijon, and then a little splash of red wine vinegar. Start whisking. Once you've got that nice, slightly thickened texture, drizzle in your olive oil. fall through your whisk. It's like a nice, thick, double cream texture. Beautiful. Now take the mayo to another level with anchovies and crushed garlic. Now, chop up the anchovies and the garlic together. I sort of almost want that to be like a really nice puree. Then grated parmesan. Lemon juice. That will make the dressing Citrusy, lighter in colour, and then a little splash of water in. Now, all of a sudden, it transforms that mayonnaise into an amazing, delicious, light dressing. Nice. Next job, the croutons, and I like using crusty bread for extra crunch. And just dice up your bread. Season with salt and pepper, then add to a hot pan with olive oil, 
and fry. Give that a really nice toss. As the croutons start to turn golden, simply grate on a generous amount of Parmesan cheese. Keep them rolling around, stop them from sticking together. You get that really nice, cheesy, delicious crouton. And now, they're out. Now for the fun job, assembling the Caesar salad, starting with romaine lettuce. And don't slice the lettuce too thinly. A squeeze of lemon. On with half of that gutsy anchovy mayo dressing, saving some to coat your chicken later. Then sprinkle half your croutons. Give that a really nice mix. Salad in. It's all beautifully dressed. Add the remaining croutons and finish with a good grating of Parmesan cheese. That, for me, is a perfect Caesar salad. However, I'm going to take it to another level and grill a stunning chicken breast. Start by preheating your griddle pan, then butterfly your chicken breast. Simply slice from the thin end towards the thick bit of the breast. Let the knife do the work and literally just open up. Now, that's how we butterfly a chicken breast. So, therefore, it will cook twice as quick and just nice and moist in the centre. Season the chicken on both sides with salt and ground pepper. Lay your chicken breast onto the grill. Never oil the grill until you're absolutely ready to cook your chicken. Now, turn them over. Uh, beautiful. Cook for three to four minutes on each side until the chicken's got those lovely stripes from the griddle, which adds a gorgeous smoky flavour. Whilst they rest, spoon over some of the remaining anchovy dressing. The chicken cools down, but the flavour, the seasoning of the anchovy, the garlic and the parmesan seeps into that chicken. Slice the chicken into strips. Mm. Wow. I serve the chicken warm in a separate bowl so it doesn't wilt the salad. Spoon the dressing. Finish that with a little touch of dressing. An American classic. And I think one of the most popular salads anywhere in the world. But it's still one of the most delicious. When it comes to lunch, this really is an American dream. A delicious Caesar salad and succulent golden griddled chicken with peanut butter and jam cookies for dessert. Coming up, it's dinner time. And helping me create an American feast so good it'll bring tears to your eyes is middle daughter Holly. Was homework that bad? Lemons. <laughs> oh, no. Don't rub your eyes. And the competition to be the next Ramsay to rule in the kitchen is on. I think she did this one pretty good. You think so? If you're not as good as mine. When it comes to cooking techniques, barbecuing is virtually a religion in America, especially in the southern states. Down there, the real barbecue pros use big open fire pits to get huge joints of meat, super succulent and fantastically perfumed with smoke and spice. So, my ultimate American dinner has to include an amazing melt-in-the-mouth barbecue beef. But I'm doing it the easy way, cooked in the oven, low and slow. My family has spent a lot of time in the US and they love American food. Joining me in the kitchen today is Jack's twin sister, Holly. We're creating barbecue style beef brisket with crunchy coleslaw and sweet potato wedges, which will be right up her street. Holly, now, you love barbecues, right? Yes. So, you're going to help me barbecue this delicious piece of brisket. Brisket, look at it, beautiful. It's a very tough cut of meat, so it needs to be cooked slowly so it gets really nice and tender. Are we barbecuing it outside? We're going to actually put the barbecue flavour on there, but we're going to cook it in the oven. Okay. okay. So, mustard powder. Okay. Here, we have some celery seed. Next, a little bit of salt in there. Okay. What's this here? Cumin. Two again. Nice. Good. Now, this one. Cayenne pepper. Absolutely right. Right, two teaspoons of that in there as well. Good. Now what I want you to do, fresh pepper on there. I'll give that a little mix. Mm -hmm. Roll up your little sleeves and then I want you to rub all that spice into the brisket. Almost like you're massaging it in there. Good girl. Come on, Holes, get your hands nice and flat on there. Good girl. Now that's nice and coated, okay? 
in the spice. So, gas on, roasting tray on. What we've got to do now with all those spices is sear them in. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil into the tray. Well done. Okay. good. That's getting nice and hot now. You get your brisket. All that spice. Lay that in there nicely. Okay. So now, we'll start colouring it. As you start to sear in, you smell those spices? Yep. All that spice left on the plate, we're going to use, yeah? I want you to get the onions. Nice and carefully, slice them down. Not too thin, but just like you're chopping them. Take your time. Smell all those spices now? Good girl. Thank you. I'm going to wash my hands so I can rub my eyes. Damn, Holly. Was homework that bad? No, <laughs> the onions. Oh, no. Don't rub your eyes. Don't rub your eyes. We've got the colour. Look, on the biscuit. OK? Yeah. Take that out, literally for 30 seconds. OK? Onions into the tray, please. Nice. You see, it's starting to smell slightly barbecuey already. Give that a little stir. Nice. Now, one nice tablespoon of brown sugar. What does the brown sugar do, Dad? So the brown sugar, you're going to start caramelising the onions. Right, from there, my bay leaves in, please. Good girl. Hold. Yes, please. Right, do you want to take over? Sure. Good, careful, that tray is very, very hot. A tablespoon of tomato puree. Roast that off at the bottom of the tray. You really rub it in amongst the onions. Good girl. Now, look at the colour of those onions. Right, now, time for a little drink. <laughs> for the brisket. OK, one bottle of beer in, please. So you go in, you put yours in there, I'll put mine here. Good. Uh, good health to you and your brisket. Good health. Mm. Bring that to the ball. OK, now, this is where it gets really exciting. I want you to lift the brisket up and put it on top of the onions. In she goes. Good girl. And then, and I want you to pour the stock all the way around, please. I'm using beef stock, but it will work with chicken stock or even vegetable stock. Once the stock has come to the boil, cover tightly with foil. You just pinch in the ends. Bend that down, and then you just twist all the way. So that's nice and tight. That's the hard work done. Thank Boom. you. Simply pop it in the oven for three and a half hours, and as it cooks, you can get on with the side dishes. First job, sweet potato wedges with some serious flavour. Start by making a spice mix. In a dry pan, toast coriander seeds until beautifully aromatic. Then put them in a pestle and mortar, add salt and grind. Next, smoked paprika, dried oregano, cayenne pepper and mix. Spice mix done. Now simply cut your sweet potatoes into wedges. Toss in olive oil and thoroughly cover with the spice mix. Onto a baking tray and into a preheated oven for 30 minutes, turning halfway. Irresistible sweet potato wedges are ready. Now to finish off my beef. See that smell? Just sort of travels everywhere. Oh. oh. Now, look at that. So, we're going to leave that to rest. What does resting mean? Resting means where you've cooked a joint and you just leave it to relax. So, it'll make the meat so much more tender. OK? Right, coleslaw. Traditionally, you would mix slaw with what? Mayonnaise. That's right, mayonnaise. This time, we're going to do it a little different. So, I'd like you to put the yoghurt into the bowl for me. Please, all of it. I'll start slicing the white cabbage and the red cabbage. Now, from there, a nice tablespoon of mustard in there, please. Give that a nice mix-up. Nice little touch of salt and pepper. OK. Now, a little cider vinegar. So a little splash of cider vinegar in there, OK. As I shred this, yeah. OK, I'd like you, please, then to get the red cabbage and just open up into that and mix it in at the same time. And then you fold that in there as I start shredding. See how it's coming together? Yeah. Right, that's all the red cabbage. Now, for the white. So, got that nice vinegary 
tartness to the slaw, and the yogurt keeps it nice and fresh. Last little bit in. One more little thing. So, put some nice chopped fresh chives in there, and that will give it this nice light onion flavour. So, chives in. How's that? Now taste it with the chives in there. Mm. Delicious. So, I would like you to fill up the bowl. I'm going to very carefully lift out my brisket. How come has it shrunk? It's been in the oven for nearly three and a half hours. So it's been cooked slowly. That sits on there. Oh, my goodness me. Let me just show you what this looks like. I'm going to start slicing it. We'll see how soft. Mmm. Look at that. And here's the thing about helping Daddy cook. Here's the perk. You get to taste it first before anybody. That is so good. That tastes delicious. So you've got all that wonderful flavour in there. Last job is to create an incredibly quick and delicious sauce. Gas on and reduce the spicy juices and onions the beef cooked in. Then add in cider vinegar and you've got a brilliant tangy barbecue sauce. That... Smells nice. Doesn't it? Wow. That is brisket and a half. Now the rest of it can go in the gravy pot. And that's a really nice, rich, spicy barbecue onion gravy. That, my darling, is the perfect way to serve brisket. Right, you ready? If you carry the sweet potato for me, I've got the brisket. Wow. Let's go, darling. Well done, by the way. Thank you. This is a real American beauty. Gorgeous, low and slow, cooked barbecue beef brisket with sweet potato wedges and yoghurt coleslaw. Megan, Jack. Hi. Tilly. Big, deep, smoky flavours that bring the taste of the American South to your kitchen. Who would like some coleslaw? I'd love some oh, coleslaws. And who would like some gravy? Thank you. But it's spicy and slightly barbecue. How's the brisket? It's really good. It's amazing, especially with the gravy. Mm. And what do you think of the capability of your big sister? I think she did this one pretty good. You think so? Yeah. Mm. Maybe not as good as mine, but... Mm. I can feel a lot of competition in amongst the Ramsey girls. Good job, Hoss. Thank you. To collect selected recipes from the show, go to my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash Gordon. Next week, I cook a hearty breakfast, lunch and dinner fit to make a grown man cry. Now that smells amazing. Almost brings tears to your eyes. That's if my youngest daughter, Tilly, mm. doesn't eat it all first. You're not allowed anymore. <laughs> Well, can drinking urine cure some very common ills? Health freaks, half past eight tonight. Jamie's next.